Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, a pretty important topic that I think probably gets overlooked a little too much in healthcare, and that's the uh, support and advice that we give to caregivers. Um, of course, those who are uh, survivors have a long and difficult road ahead with their recovery, but those who are taking care of them have an equally long and difficult road uh, just in a different way. So we're going to talk about some, some tips for those caregivers to to maximize the, their caregiving ability, and then also a little bit of advice about how they can take care of themselves as well. Um, so first thing is first, um, organization of kind of the, the medical needs uh, that your survivor will need from you. Um, make sure you have questions for your doctors uh, ready when you go to appointments, write them down as they come up at home or, or as you're doing things throughout your daily life. Um, and then uh, because medications are a huge part of, of any major medical event, um, making sure you have a list of them, having the name, the purpose, the dose, any side effects that you're noticing, and then who prescribed the medication so that you can talk to the appropriate provider. Um, the second thing is, is emotional support and, and love for your survivor. Um, make sure that if your survivor is kind of is closing off or not talking to you or, or sort of isolating themselves, that you encourage them to talk about their feelings uh, with you because ultimately that's what you're there for. You're there as a support system for them. And so that they can get uh, whatever's on their mind off their mind and you can kind of help them through that. Um, it'll also help you as well because uh, there's no harder feeling for a caregiver than to feel like you're not helping your loved one because you don't know what's happening. So always encourage them to talk about their feelings. Um, obviously show that continuous love and guidance and support and have a lot of patience because they're going to be agitated. They're going to be irritated with you. Um, they will uh, likely not want you to be helping them out all the time. And that's just something that they're going to have to learn to, to kind of cope with a little bit because they will ultimately need help. Um, but at the same time, just be patient with them because they will take longer to do things and I'm, I'm on a more practical uh, standpoint, but also they will be um, probably a little less friendly about things from time to time. So just kind of know that that's the stroke talking and not them and that they're just frustrated with the new life that they are having to deal with at the moment. Um, I encourage them to join a support group. I totally recommend as a caregiver that you go with them because you will meet other caregivers there most likely and you can talk to them about how they handle things and about uh, how they um, you know, cope with, with all the stress that comes with being a caregiver, caregiver and how they uh, cope with um, Everyday, everyday life and challenges and how they um, get through them, how they find time for themselves, things of that nature. So always encourage them to go and you should go too. And then uh, read resources together, learn about your new situation together. You're ultimately a team, so you should operate as one. So learn, learn, uh, succeed and fail together uh, throughout the whole process. <clears throat> Um, kind of along the lines of them getting mad at you for really, or for you doing things, uh, to kind of help with that a little bit is something that you can do is just encourage their independence. Um, so let them do as much as they can do for themselves um, safely is the, is the key there, as, as safely as they can do it. So whether that's bathing or cleaning or uh, walking or cooking or whatever it is they want to do, as long as they're doing it safely, um, you don't necessarily need to be helping them. Maybe, you know, be in the background to make sure that nothing goes wrong, but don't necessarily need to be hands-on helping them if, if they feel like they can do it. So kind of encourage that independence, kind of let them spread their wings a little bit as they recover more. Um, it's going to be tough to watch them struggle because they will struggle a lot more with some simpler things than they used to. Uh, but it will benefit both of you in the long run if you let them sort of learn the ropes again and kind of become more independent for themselves and for you you will not always be the caregiver because they will eventually learn to do things for themselves again and uh, that's all that's only a benefit to both of you um and then as i said earlier be patient everything will be slower um but you have to encourage your survivor to be patient with themselves because they'll get frustrated really easily um if things that are supposed to be really easy are taking a long time for them to do. 
And then, like I said earlier, you have to be patient as well um, because we all kind of have things we need to get done in life and it's more difficult to do when you have all this medical stuff in the way or all this, um, all these impairments that make things a lot slower than they used to be and that can get really um, frustrating for, for both you and the survivors. So I would highly recommend um, showing a lot of patience. And then uh, the last thing I want to say is that if you are a caregiver and you are caring for someone uh, full time or most of the time at home, uh, finding an outlet for yourself is uh, maybe the most important thing so that you uh, have some time to yourself, some time to enjoy your regular life. Um, it's wonderful that you would dedicate 100% of your life to your loved one, but it's just not practical at the end of the day. It's exhausting, it's fatiguing, and uh, ultimately is going to lead to a, a worse relationship. So um, if you have friends or a home health aide or our neighbors or whoever can come and, and watch over your loved one for, you know, a few hours or whatever it is a day, just so that you can go do um, things for yourself and something worth looking into. So um, we'll probably talk about that a little bit more in a later video, but um, for now, I think that'll do it for this one. And until next time, I'll see you later.